previously on the Ultimate Cowboy Showdown. Let's go, boys, hanging on one. Whew. The overnight challenge proved to be more than Keaton on the blue team could handle. Got out here tonight, and it's getting cold. Every muscle in my back is tight now, and I can't even get back on the horse, so pack my personals. And tensions flared on the green team. Come get the back of these cows. Oh my gosh, Sal. I kind of, I, I lost it. See, look, I'm behind you. All right, we're going. behind him. Let's keep going. You're right. Do you want to stop him? Or you want yeah, to... dude, come on. Now help do me you out. Want to stop him or do you want to push him? Stop him, Sal. Where Jamon continued to be the target of his teammates. He does not know how to read cattle. Last night, if you're sitting on them cattle and you're wanting them to bed down, why would you trot around? School on your horse, flog on your horse. You are full of it. Buck, you could easily, you said probably 100 words to me all night long. Not one of those words that came out of your mouth was, hey, I think we should do this different. In the end, the green team's lack of teamwork put them on the chopping block. This ain't a blister that just come up from a short walk. It ain't. It's not. This is something that's been. I'm going to say, I've been I don't want to talk to you no more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stephen Heitman was sent packing. Steve and I, I mean, you talk a lot, but I mean, the truth is you didn't get on your horse one time last night and you didn't go rope this morning. So, Stephen Heitman, you're done here. Gather your personals and hit the trail, appreciate it. And now, six cowboys remain. Who will ride on and who will be sent home for the next elimination? Only one will take home the $50,000 worth of cattle Air Equip 87 Series Q Catch Cattle Shoot and their new Healer Portable Corral. Who will win? The Ultimate Cowboy Showdown. When it's just six people left, this is when that immunity buckle really matters because, heck, there's three people on my team. In a team challenge, there's nobody else to look at but the three people that are there. I'm excited to see what this new immunity buckle challenge is because the last two has been a talent show and cooking. We haven't ranched all that hard. All right, Cowboys, welcome to your next immunity buckle challenge. We're in the famous Powder Horn Arena where your cow control skills are going to be put to the test. We're going to play a cowboy-sized game tic-tac-toe. Each team will take turns trying to drive a cow into one of the squares. You have one minute to hold the cow in a square for 10 seconds. The team that wins this tournament will then go head to head against each other. And then the ultimate winner will receive this outlaw spirit immunity buckle and be safe from elimination. Helping me today is tic-tac-toe expert Buddy Schnaufer. <laughs> today the immunity buckle challenge is tic-tac-toe with cows and I couldn't be more excited. I talk about having feel and, and eye for cattle. This is a perfect time to show that. Me and Jamon, we've had our differences, but in this deal, we're going to have to work together and hopefully get to the final three, then duke it out. All right, blue team, you're up first. Our strategy is to keep that cow moving forward and let her rest in the place that we want her, make that a release area and not a pressure area. Let's see what they go for here. Cow comes out, and I mean, it's going perfect. I mean, she's nice and calm, and we direct her right to the squares. Start time. We just need the cow to stay in the square for 10 seconds. That's perfect. All right, y'all want X's or O's? X, please. X's. OK, you get a big old blue X. Hey, if they're all like this, we got it in the bag. Good job, guys. You guys made that look easy. All right, green team, your turn to counter. We watched the cow before us go. She was super quiet, really broke. Our cow starts off about that way, but she's not quite as quiet as the other one. Stop. OK. 10 seconds feels like an eternity. It gets nerve wracking. All right, that's time. No mark. Tic tac. Oh, that didn't work. All right, blue team, you're back up. The blue team has one X on the board, and the green team, nothing. Playing this tic tac toe, we're limited to what we can actually do. We can't rope her and hold her down, so we just kind of have to hope she'll just stand where she needs to stand. Start. Start. Stop. Time. All right, green, here we go. 
Green team needs to get this gal in a square to counter the blue team. See what happens here. Sound pushing. Start. Start. Easy. Time. Oh, well. Green team gets the center square. All right, blue team. And it starts now. Start. Start. Stop. Time. No mark. All right, Green. Here we go. Start. Start. Time. Oh, wow. Just right. Oh, one more second and yeah. she'd have been out. This is going to make it a little tougher on the blue team now. Mm -hmm. Blue, see if you can get an X on the board. Start. So the cow is finally on a square. Time. Wow. Woo! Yes. That's the longest 10 seconds of my life. The blue team played defense. They put their cow in a spot to where we couldn't score. But we're in the middle, so we still have other boxes to choose from. Green team gets one in the top right. Let's see if blue team can block. No mark. All we can do now is kind of hope and pray that the green team falls apart. Looks like Sal's going to bring her on up here. We got the tick, we got the tack. Now all we need is the toe. As that cow's working down toward the middle of this, she lands in a box that's not the one that's going to make us win. But some told me just give her one more bump. Start. She stepped in that box. Everybody held their position. We held our breath, and it was really, really still. Time. Wow. wow. Woo! 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 <laughs> you know, the green team, we have the O's. We won. That's it. Game over for the blue team. So the blue team, we're tic-tac toast right now. Green team won the first game, and now Jamon, Buck, and Sal will each get one cow and try to hold it in one square as long as possible. Whoever holds it the longest wins the outlaw spirit immunity buckle. All right, Jamon, you're up first. Here we go. Yes, sir. Five minutes. I feel like I'm really off to a good start. My cow's got a lot more movement than some of the other cattle that we've seen. She doesn't quite seem to be settled, so as I'm trotting around her, I'm trying to get in front of her eye a little bit so that she looks and maybe hooks up with me and she'll settle like that. It's not really working. He's at two minutes right now, and he ain't got her to step in there yet. Jamon, he has absolutely no ranching experience. That guy doesn't know the south end of a cow from the north end. He can ride and he can rope, but his cow knowledge is not there at all. This is a hard game right here by yourself now. All right. All right. Jamon did not get the cow in the square once. It is what it is. You know, this is still a game. So just cheer on the next guy. Be a good sport about it. OK, Buck's up next. Well, here's where he'll be able to put his money where his mouth is, because he right. was once saying Jamon didn't know anything about working cattle. He does, so let's see. That black cow, she come out of the arena, she was pretty waspy. So I knew how to get control of her. What I wanted to do is make the outside uncomfortable for when she went in, the pressure went off. She's sniffing the line right there. Well, he's about to get her to step in the square. Start time. If you let them cattle know that being outside is not the answer, you will be successful. Buck's got her here, he got her just quiet, sitting there. I mean, I literally handle cattle for a living, not as a cowboy, like I'm a cutting horse trainer. I have to ride through cattle. I'll have 40, 50 head in the arena at a cutting, and I've got to pick 10 that I think are gonna suit me and let me show my horse to the best of my ability. So picking cattle is number one, and you've got to know how to handle them. He'll be tough to beat. This gonna put all the pressure on Sal. I mean, he's gonna have to get her in there. Time. Good job, dude. Wow. Gosh, dang. That's a good job, but For a cow to stand in there two and a half minutes when she was as waspy as she was coming out, that showed that I do know how to handle cattle. Good job, dude, for real. Yes, sir. All right, Sal, you're up. Sal needs to hold his cow for longer than two and a half minutes. Ooh, he kind of got a little old trotter. So the easiest way to get a cow to a spot I want is push her to it, give her some pressure, and take it off as soon as she's there. He's got her up to the circle, let's see. You got her stepped in. Stepped oh. out. Easy, Sal. Easy. Got a good count. 
You know, if you spark a cow like that, they're gonna wanna get away from you. And in this deal, you want them to almost kind of face up to you so you can just constantly hold that hole. Come on, come on, don't move, Sal, Sal, stop. Okay, okay. Start keeping this big cow in this tiny little square for as long as you can. Stop. Five seconds for Sal, won't do it. Man, that's some hard stuff, it really is. All right, well, that was interesting. Good job all around, though. That, that was fun to watch y'all do that. So, Javon, you didn't get your stop at all. Sal, you had a few seconds. Bucky, I think it was two minutes, 38 seconds. So, you want this, Buck? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, come get it. Congratulations, you're safe from elimination. Thank you. All right. Good job, Buck. Winning this immunity buckle, that's pretty awesome because this is exactly what I do for a living. And I showed up today and I showed the judges, hey, I'm here, I know how to handle cattle. You know, I started out in the trenches, you know. I, I would do any job anywhere for anybody. And I've worked hard at this for many years to get to where I am. So back when I was 19, I got myself in some trouble with the law for making bad decisions, hanging around with the wrong people. And when I realized that you need to take responsibility for it and work hard at being a great cowboy and a great man, I had to leave town because I was headed nowhere fast and I wanted to take responsibility for my actions. So uh, I packed my bags and headed to Montana and Idaho, Wyoming, just cowboying all over the United States. And through all those big ranches and those hard times and those hard experiences when you're bogging through six feet of snow trying to trail cows on your own, that toughens you up. That makes you grow up. You know, I've worked hard on my reputation, doing the right thing, trying to do the best. And uh, I'm very proud of the cowboy I am today. And I'm here to prove to the world that everybody deserves a second chance, as long as you do something with that second chance. Hey, hey, Let's see if we can get him, get him, get him. Someone clank to the fence, please, Sarah. Why wouldn't we push him that way? I don't know why you want me to roll around the Because there's a pole right there. Fine, let's do it your way, Stephen. But when your plan doesn't work, you're on the chopping block. What's up, Jamon? Yo. You know, I know we had a little bit of head button there for a little bit. So I'm sitting outside just enjoying the sun, and Sal just jumps right into it, like, hey, man, you know, <laughs> we've had alert our differences. Yeah, that's not really godly of you. Oh, what's up, dude? Come over here and see if I'm godly about it. I'm not trying to fight you. I'm telling you point blank, you've been asleep all night. You have no clue what they've been doing over here. When you see another man in a wreck, you come help, cowboy. Dude, we're a team. Help me. I'm used to always being by myself. I've been by myself for a long time. I think that's kind of where we were just hitting heads there. And You know what? Man, we're good. I'm a little blown away at the fact I didn't think that he was gonna come with that conversation, but that's cool because that's him being a man. You know, I think we have a lot in common, I really do. Like what? Just growing up wise. A lot of people think that I've done this all my life, I have not. You know, we bounced all over the place. We lived in trailer parks and uh, it was rough. And that's why I'm here, you know? <clears throat> I could see that yeah. part, yeah. understanding that. I don't want my kids growing up like that, and that's why I'm here. And I'm gonna get to where I wanna be, but that's this is my shortcut, and this is why it's a big deal for me to push myself. Yeah. But it's just one of those things, I wanna be the best, you know? You know, I don't want my kids to have to go through what I did growing up, because it was hard, it really was. And that's why I have so much passion for this $50,000 worth of cattle. If it doesn't work out, I'm still gonna get there, but this is my shortcut. Man, I felt like an outsider growing up, too. Um, I've been told, this ain't the skin for a cowboy, you know? I remember showing up to bull ridings and guys telling me, like, well, I can't get on here. And, and it took me a long time to get past that. But all those differences are the things that, like, were literally the fuel on the fire telling me, you can, you know? Don't let nobody tell you not to. Every part of being a cowboy for me has came with a struggle, a lesson, and some kind of perseverance. This is no different. This has been weeks of straight, grueling, testing, trying me. I've been prepared because every single day since I was eight years old, I've woke up dying to put a belt buckle on, dying to stand out and just working my tail off to be the best that I can. Yeah. I rode bulls for 15 years professionally. Towards the end of my career, I decided I wanted to step away from this and start a youth program that gave the same opportunity to inner city kids. 
The gist of this program is to get inner city kids acclimated with equine experiences, introduce them to trades in the equine and agricultural fields. Having $50,000 worth of cattle would not only be life changing for me, but this could literally change the trajectory of this whole program. Grown up in a place to where like, you know, you start popping off with some he said, she said, it's a good way to get beat up or in a fight that you don't want. You know what that's like being a black kid in the middle of Denver, riding a city bus up and down, you know, it's like you get off the bus, people are capping, you get on the bus, people are capping, you know, and you can't, you can't fight them all, you know, it, it's pointless. I can honestly say that one thing I, I admire about you and what relates to me is that, you know, through, you know, the things that look different to other people for us, like we, we've stayed true to what's important to us, you know? For a while, I've thought that you guys, everybody in the bunkhouse kind of steered clear of me. Um, and I'm sure I'd probably come off as like standoffish and I, I don't mean to, but dude, let's, um, All right, you man. know. It's every man for himself, but just know, you know, if you get in a bind, I got you. It's yeah. Likewise, you know, Heck with yeah. good luck. Sal and I, we're shaking hands. You know, this is what cowboys do. We all know that working cattle with somebody can bring out the worst in you, but it's what happens when the dust settles. And Sal was brave enough to come up and start speaking to me, so I reciprocated that, you know? You know, that's kind of the cowboy way. Um, <laughs> you say your piece and you roll on. There, he's got a shot, Eddie. Oh, we got this. No, he missed. Oh, oh we got two of them missed. Sir, he ain't been on a horse hardly at all. No, it's cost them a lot of time. They need help. Yeah. With only three cowboys left on each team, this upcoming elimination challenge will put the ultimate pressure on them to win. Buck has the immunity buckle. I'm not quite thrilled about that. I want to trust and believe that Buck's going to go lay it out on the line and do his part, but if he doesn't, based on some of the stuff that he said, that is a dangerous position for me to be in. All right, Cowboys. In today's elimination challenge, I want to see which of you has the smarts to not just be a cowboy, but a cattleman. A cattleman will often get orders by the pound when it comes to delivering cattle. So today, we have an order for 15,000 pounds. Each team will have 45 minutes to gather the cattle that they think will make that weight. There are 50 head of cattle in this pasture. It's a mix of bulls, cows, and calves. You'll need to gather them up and get them over there to the air equipped portable corral. You'll then need to put a red tag on any cattle that you want to bring to the scales. Calves can't go down the cattle chute to tag, so you'll need to rope them to get their tags on. You have to pick at least two bulls, two calves, and two cows. The rest is up to you. Now, don't put a tag on anything that you don't want, because when you get the tag on it, it's going on the scales. The team that comes closest to 15,000 pounds, high or low, is the winner, and it'll be safe from elimination. Helping me today, Buddy Schnaufer Cash Myers. All right, we flipped the coin. Blue team, you're up first. Let's go. For today's challenge, the wind is howling. We're getting 40 mile per hour gusts. I mean, I changed my hat just because I can't keep my cowboy hat on. I think drop the bulls, pen them through, go get our bulls, then we're not wasting time sorting cows and because and, it's going to be tight. Do you want to wait and do those calves last? I mean, they, they can't go too far in here. No. I just think it'd be easy just let them calves come out of the chute first and just be right there, rope them, and tie them down, and then we don't got to worry about them. So Steven Yeltsin right now just thinks he's the leader. He wants to talk above everybody. He does not give respect when respect is due. He wants to act like he's listening to you too, but then again, he just wants to talk over you and just go right ahead with what he wants to do. At the end of the day, this competition, there's only one winner. And so I'm going to be the leader. I got to man up and say that I stepped up to the plate and got the job done and took home the prize. I was saying, like, once we let everything out, let the two calves out and then just rope them, tag them, and then they'd probably go back to those cows. I'm going to be less chaotic. Let's move on. Let's get the job done. I just think put them calves in that chute, and then it's just a guy who can stand on either end and just snag them as they come out. So once again, Stephen Yellowtail doesn't want to hear what I have to say. He wants to do with what he wants to do, which is fine. Let's do it your way, Stephen. But when your plan doesn't work, you're on the chopping block. I was um, guessing the bulls at 15, that's what 1700. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We're looking for 15,000 pounds. Go.
Got Koi checking the pins, getting it open. Yeah. Sarah getting back gate all set. Yellowtail went and got the gate, gonna get around them. Y'all wanna come up and then I'll just slide through that gate, get in front of them? Okay. Oh, Sarah's, oh, Sarah's got some bulls over here fighting over here. Trying to get them bulls scattered out. They're wanting to fight. Let's see if we can get them together and get them pinned. Someone flank to the fence, please, Sarah. Why wouldn't we push them that way? I don't know why you want me to roll around the Because there's a bull right there. They're hollering at each other now. They are definitely not communicating right now. Even Yellowtail needs to take charge if he's going to be the leader. Hey, hey, hey. Let's get these pen guys. Okay. It took some time, but the cattle are in the corral. Now they need to sort the bulls from the cows and rope the calves that they want to take to the scale. All right, let's get moving on the next thing. What do you, where do you want everybody else at? You want to do our calves real quick? Okay, okay. He's probably 650 right there. Yeah. Well, who wants to rope? I will. Okay. Anyone else want to rope? I'm out here for you. Okay, let's do it. Not surprised at all. When it's time to decide who's gonna rope the calves, Sarah, she don't want to do it. You reckon we should bring the horse out there? You want me to work the shoe and then go to you guys, or what do you think? Um, you, I bet you leave your horse if you wanted. There's no big secret about it. I know Sarah wants me out, but I'll do whatever it takes to stay in this competition. Steven Yellowtail wants to rope two of the calves first. Not the smartest plan, because now, they either have to waste time to tie them off in the field or leave a man out there to watch them so they don't run off. And this will be time consuming. I really think Stephen Yeltsin is too slow when it comes to time competitions, but right. he is a great hand, does a lot of things right, but man, it seems like we're waiting on him a lot. Yeah. Y'all ready? Yep. There he's got a shot at him. Before we got this, no, oh, he missed it. Go through that sucker. Oh, we got two of them missed right there. Get ahead. Yellowtail's having a little trouble with rope today. I think rope's too light for this wind. Yellowtail's easing around. Oh. Not great. There, Yellowtail. Oh, no. It's taken the guys a long time to rope these calves, and I'm frustrated because nothing is running the way it's supposed to. Good job, Cory, getting around easy. You bet. He got him that time. It was a good job, but we got a ways to go. Man, this isn't the way it should have gone. We should have just been able to go in there, rope them at the end, and be done and push them out. Right now, we're blowing these yearlings up. Make it work right here. Yep. There you got him. Steven's got it. Here, stop, cool. Yeah. Come in here and heal her down. They're going to get some exercise. And she's going to go out and run. Just get away. She didn't ride her old horse over here. I'd have rode my horse over there. Yes, sir. Let me get short. Sarah ain't been on a horse hardly at all. No, it's cost them a lot of time. They need help. Yeah. Get, get in, in there, there Sarah. Sarah. Get in there. You stand there and tag him right quick. What's Whitey weigh, 580? Yes, sir. And what'd we say this, five and a half? So 10-5. So the blue team has two calves tagged and don't want to tag any more of them. They still need at least two bulls and two cows to get as close to 15,000 pounds as possible. Come on, Give me a tagger. We have Sarah putting the bulls in the chute. Boys tagging them and yellow tails okay. doing the yep. math. You want to use all four bulls? Gotta get us there quicker. Yeah, we can. They're gonna fight us the whole way, though. It looks like they're thinking taking four bulls right here. They'll need to be careful when they're picking their final cows. Sarah, you're gonna have to help him because I gotta make sure these guys don't. Now Stephen's getting on his horse to make sure the tag bulls don't wander off. It's a smart move, but may not have been necessary had they planned this out a little better. Right now, I'm upset with Steven Yellowtail. He kind of went into this thing trying to be the ringleader of the whole thing. He's one of those guys, if, if you're not doing it his way, he's not going to help you do it your way. And then he's going to say, hey, it didn't work for you. Heck, even when you do it his way, he's still slow and not even being in it where he needs to be. What is it? It's like 7,200 bulls? And yes. then you call it the yearlings 500? 8,400? Yes. 8,200? Yes, ma'am. Now Sarah's doing the math. Well, you need about 8,000 more, 9,000 more? I'd say eight. What's they got? They need about five cows. 8,200? 16 would be eight. So it was just Coy and I working the shoots, but I used to show steers back in high school and I was always spot on with the weight. So hopefully we get it to 15,000 pounds. Pretty big cow. I'll say 11,000 with her. Okay, what the count is? I don't know if they know how many cows they tag. No, Sarah keeps kind of doing the math in her head. Let's see what happens here. Where did Steven go? I don't know. He's... When it comes down to it, Steven yelled, tell me he wasn't there. Those bulls, if you'll just let them sit, they're not going to run off. 
The only way they're gonna run is if you chase them. And when Stephen Yeltel has chased them, that's when he started running. If you let them sit, when you get done, everybody can go after him, get around him, and push him. One man's not gonna push one bull where he don't wanna go. They got a mind of their own. Any animals on the creek there? One of them white charlets wants nothing to do with the herd, and he's just been trying to sell out, and he's been giving us problems from the very beginning. And right now, I'm on a completely different planet. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just trying to get this white bull back to the herd. That's all I can do right now. Stephen Yellowtail is doing a good job getting the bull back, but he's left his teammates for a long time. I'm not sure they have a good track on what they've tagged. So 14 7 we'll herd, one more cow. These are very uneducated guesses. So in the end, we put in four bulls, seven cows, and two yearlings. Come on, man. They've untied their calves, and they're pushing the cattle to the pen. All right, they should be able to drive them in there now. Guys, see if you can ease up, and I'll just go check gates. Yeah, they're looking to the spot where they're going. So the blue team has tagged seven cows, four bulls, and two calves. We'll see how close they get to 15,000 pounds. Come on, we got to shut this back gate. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Steven. All right, guys, we got them in the pen. We'll get them on scale, see what the way. Whoever's closest to 15,000 is going to win. Get them on. Give us some room. Yes. Hey, hey, I got you. Hey, hey. Today, Jamon proved that he doesn't know how to read cattle. I have said it time and time again, he needs to go home. I think we should go kick the cows out first because they should hang out, put the bulls yeah. behind them, and then we'll go with the calves. That way the calves will maybe be hanging around so we ain't got to just be chasing them. Just see which to get ones a rope. we want yeah. kick those ones out. Weighing and shipping cattle, this is my forte. I do it often. So I'm taking the lead and my team's going to win and I'm going to make sure of it because on the green team, everybody's won an immunity buckle but myself. So I'm like sweating bullets over here because if we get put on the chopping block, I could be going home. He has more feedlock experience looking at weights. You want Sal to sort? I'm with it, yeah. yeah I'll bring him to him then. OK, I'll just sit right over here in that corner. Y'all need me to stop something, I can stop something. All right, Green, ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. You know what to do. You want the left side or the right side? Uh, I'll go to the left. I have the immunity buckle. Wherever I do, I'm safe from elimination. Sal and Jamon can be up front guiding them cattle where they need to go. I'll be in the back pretty much, and it's a good feeling because this is a tough challenge. Buck, he's going to come in there and join him. He's got the gate set like he wants. Their conversation was a lot more on the same page that I would thought they'd want to be on. I think they got a good game plan, and you know, who knows? We'll see what happens. Jamal's going to go up here and see if he can get him cut off those fence. Today's challenge is very important because I already feel that my team's going to throw me on the chopping block no matter how good I do. Um, I kind of think that they might have a little buddy-buddy relationship, but just going to do my part and hope for the best and let it all hang out. Well, it's good to see the green team working well together. Definitely some bad blood. This plan here looks a lot smoother. Let's see if they get done. Everybody's hustling, moving around. Now they got them looking. Oh, that bull's gonna get by. Yeah, here comes Sal, it's gonna work out. Good job right there. Push, 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 push. Heck, that's just the bull's up top. Get one, two, three, get three bulls. Three bulls. And we got two. Want to suck them cows in first? Uh, yeah. yeah. How many cows do we want? Eight cows? A smaller cow? Yeah. Seven, seven big ones, one small cow, yeah. and then this size calves. Yeah, two of them calves. That yeah, herpy right there would work, don't you think? Jamon and Buck, they wanted to put an extra cow. So I did the math, and if I talked them out of putting that extra cow on the scale, it is going to either save me or it is going to send me home. More cows than calves, cool. Uh, they got them sorted pretty good right here. Hey, bull, hey, bull. Hey, bull, hey, bull. There we go. Push, push, push. Let's get them out of the way. 
You may have opened that slot. Yeah. That looks like <clears throat> you got Sal's gonna go tagging right here. Tonight. You wanna go start getting some more big cows? Yep, I got you. Should I go ahead and start letting them out? Yeah, go ahead. Give us some room. <laughs> Green teams decided to tag eight cows, two bulls, and two calves. We'll see how close that gets them to 15,000 pounds. She might not quite be there, but she'll be close. I think all in all, their, month, their weight's going to be pretty close to one I like. Good cow, good. 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 That's it? Yeah, we're good. Hey! They've got their cows and bulls tagged now. They're going to rope their two calves. Tag two yearlings and go to the pen. Go to the scale yeah. house with you. Yeah. Mon got the first one. Man, he is one good roper, especially in this wind. I was gonna slip around here and get him a Brandon shot. Mon did a great job right here, but he's pulling that calf, making it hard for Sal or Buck to get a shot. He's gotta get him under control here. Let's see how it goes. We needed that cow closer to me, and he was just all over the place. Mon needs to go home because he's not a team player. I got you. I think this is more have three ropers right here. You know, last team, they spent a lot of time with Sarah just waiting around, and the other team couldn't get them roped. So this is a this is a good plan. Got him. You got the tiger? Yep, right here. You got him where they want him. Now they got to put a tag in his ear. Out of boy. Boom, I got you. We'll be doing the same thing. Yeah, y'all go ahead. I was pretty strong about coming through there, getting them caught and bringing them tight. If it hadn't have been for me, we'd probably still be out there swinging loops. <laughs> and we're on to the next one. I'm coming in hot. Yes, yeah, sir. Hey. Buck missed. You ready? I'm gonna walk with right, her. Jamon needs to get him here so yeah. they don't waste any more time. Jamon's got him a big old loop shook, yeah. Yeah, I got him that time. Got him dallied up. Buck's got the tagger. I got him tagged. We get the cap. We're going now. They're gonna get them all together. They got them pretty close. Nothing's too stirred up. So just hold what you got. Keep along. Sal's gonna go get the gate open for him. Stick them in there. Hurts. They're in the hole. Hurts. All I gotta do is shut the gate. All right, Green, good job. You got them in there. Now we'll see what they weigh. I'll see you in the arena after a while. Sir. Yes, sir. I'm looking at what we have left here, and I'm looking ahead, and I'm thinking about who can win this thing, who can be the ultimate cowboy. It's getting dark, and we have another elimination coming up. I don't really know exactly how to pinpoint this feeling. Um, I'm super nervous. Um, I don't know how, you know, today's challenge went. I'm a little bit nerve wracked because I saw how those boys shot a gang up on me last time. All I can do is, you know, hope that the judges seen that I did my best effort and hopefully it all worked out in our favor. Well, what's your thoughts? I don't know, I think the day's challenge didn't go very good, do you? I don't think it did either. There was a miscommunication. The way I thought everything should go went opposite. You know, Steven kind of wanted to take the take the head and do that, and then whenever you voice your opinions, if he didn't want to listen. So if it comes down to it, you throwing me under the bus, yourself or Steven? No, I'm gonna go with what I always say, Steven. Me too, I'm right there with you. Ride it out to the end. That's right. Stay hooked. All the way. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Green team 
we if we lose today, that puts me and Jamon in a really tight spot. It really does. So we had a cowboy slash cattleman challenge today, but overall, I, I think we were we were impressed with the way you worked today, having the immunity buckle and everything. You did a good job. Thank you. Go sit on the fence. Thank you. You're safe from elimination. Good job, Buck. Thank you. So I'll just stay with the green team for a minute. Jamon, you and Sal didn't get along too good last time. How'd it go today? You know, we're cowboys. We start over today and we worked out. That hat was, Sal? <laughs> yes, sir. That After the day that we went, we kind of made up on the deal. Well, we uh, kept pretty close eye on y'all today and didn't have too much problem with, with what we saw. There was a few snags here and there, but this whole deal is going to come down to the weight, so it's going to be important if they know what them cows weigh today. Green team, you were over by 2,000 pounds. 17,075 pounds. But blue team, you were over 3,000 pounds, 18,010. Green team, go sit on the fence. You're safe. Thank you. Good job, guys. OK, blue team, so there's three of you here. One of you's going home. Okay, blue team, one of you's going home. I guess we'll just start at the beginning, uh, the formulation of the plan. For, for the most part, it, it was mostly my plan. There was a lot of miscommunication, and I got hung up once we got the cattle into the corrals. So whose fault is this, Steve? Uh, I, I got to step up here, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I took the lead, and uh, it wasn't a good plan. Things didn't work out. It wasn't a good plan. Wasn't a good plan. Sarah, what do you think? I think it was really chaotic. Nothing really was smooth about anything. And when they were tying the calves down, it just took forever. Why did you not step on your horse and go rope? Yeah. Well, you're going to get some exercise. Surprised me she didn't ride her old horse over here. I'd have rode my horse over here. Yes, sir. Well, I was going to, and then I went to go get them. Then I'm like, well, they've outgot them. And then if I'm here mingling with the horse and then the cows, I was like, well, they, you know, I just, I was a little hesitant there because I wanted to be ready when they got it roped. And then I went to go grab him. I'm like, no, they've outgot them. And then it was just. I know it was chaotic. I watched it. I'd like to see you put them tags in your pocket and go to help them. All right. Coy, who ought to go home? Steven Yellowtail. Sarah, who ought to go home? Even. Stephen, who ought to go home? Coy or Sarah, um, either one there interchangeable. Why should you stay? The reason why all of us here today ain't facing you at this elimination is because of my planning throughout this competition. This is the first day that I felt I've failed as a leader and skill-wise, you know, I had trouble healing that, that second calf. Um, my planning wasn't good in this challenge, but up until now, it, it's been my planning and my abilities that, is, that has made our team successful. You know, I've never hid. I'm the first one, yep, I'll get on that colt. Yep, I'll go rope it. I'm not gonna win this competition by default. I'm gonna stick my neck out and show you and show the judges that I got what it takes. If I'm a leader, I can't hold people's hands forever. All right. Can I say something? Yeah. He's a hand, but he always stands behind someone and he always has an escape goat when something goes wrong so he doesn't have to take the full blow. Just the same way he stayed behind Cody and then he let Eddie fail like he was acting like he was waiting on Eddie to get on the colt, which was complete crap. He wasn't waiting on Eddie. He was tinkering, and then he put it on Eddie because he knew it was a good way to get away from the heat. And he stood behind Cody. He's never just stuck his neck out there being like, I'm the leader. He's always stood behind somebody, and then when it fails, somebody else took the heat, and that's how it's always been this whole time. I would very strongly disagree with that. And I remember that day, she was the only person in that challenge that didn't volunteer to ride a colt, you know? and, and, and so. Uh, empty cans rattled the loudest, and I mean, she's always been heard. 
That's funny because I feel like I've never been heard when I was on the team with you guys. Have you ever been a leader? Have you ever stepped up? And no, I've never your heard plan? from day one. We butted heads. Boy, so have I you ever but, stepped up? No, but today we were trying to say something. He didn't want to listen to it. Do you want to wait and do those calves last? I mean, they, they can't go too far in here. No, let's move on. Let's get them calves in that chute, and then it's just a guy who can stand on either end and just snag them as they come out. So we're going to blame it all on somebody when y'all have never been a leader. I got, I got one question. So when Yellowtail went chase the bull, we didn't even know where while, he went. Didn't know where he went. He was totally out of the deal. So it come down you two, you guys had to fill a hole. Y'all went to loading cows, tagging, pushing through and doing that. Who was doing the math there to figure out what they weighed? Because like I said, at the end of the day, it come down to what they weighed. So was this together or who took the lead on that part? Yes, sir, it was together when they come in there. We just kind of range them where they were. And then she was trying to keep the total weight on it. And so, it was just getting hectic and just got, got backwards there for a second. So with all that being said, who lost the challenge today for this team? I mean, I feel like if Yellowtail would have been there and not chasing that bull, if you'd just let that bull kind of sit there, everybody gather back up and go to it. Because if he would have been there, he would have done the math. Well, no, sir, it would have been another set of eyes on him. To me today kind of comes down to this. I have said every challenge. You take the lead, you stick your neck out there, you're gonna get hurt sometimes when your team loses. I say that and I mean it. But today what I saw, and I think I heard somebody say, you know, I think Sarah said it, every time he takes the lead but then he blames it on somebody else and then, you know, he covers for himself or something like that. But I tell you, I mean, what I saw today is I saw six people and five of them threw ropes and one person didn't and one person did the math today and it came out way wrong. So, sorry, Sarah. That's crazy. Back to person. Yep. Hit the trail. Unbelievable. Uh, I'm so shocked that I'm going home right now. Like, what? That wasn't my game plan. I. I did my job today and, and those two guys didn't and then I got put on the spot because the weight was wrong. I know without a shadow of a doubt I'm a better hand than Steven Yellowtail and he just got real lucky that the judges put it on me today. It's fine. All right, everybody, from here on out, there's no more teams. You're going to have to work together, but it is best man wins. I'm looking at what we have left here, and I'm looking ahead, and I'm thinking about who can win this thing, who can be the ultimate cowboy. We're gonna have one more immunity buckle challenge, and it's the most important immunity buckle challenge that we're gonna have. And from there on out, make the best cowboy win.